Fáil tar oibh ríos de cardi iascrí, cuige físhan ele oimse. Um, you're all very welcome along to another video from Gun Dog and Fly, and um, today I'm going to tie you a spent mayfly. Um, now, just for my American viewers, this isn't a generic mayfly. This is an imitation of a specific fly, namely Ephemera danica. And that fly is fished here uh, in Ireland and also in uh, Britain, where it appears usually in late May and very early June. And um, it's fished quite a lot here on both rivers and lakes, uh, particularly on the bigger western lakes. And we of course have the dun, but I'm, today I'm going to tie uh, the, the spent, i.e. the spinner of the mayfly. And um, there's many, many versions of this. This is my own, well, it's one of a few versions that I tied. This one has been particularly su successful for quite a number of people who um, bought them from me and used them on the western lakes and they also use them on rivers. So this is how it's tied. Now the tying of this fly is not um, very difficult. Um, even a beginner should be able to handle this given enough time to practice. Uh, the hook I'm going to use is um, it's okay here, it's a size 10 and it's light and very strong. Um, the make of this, I can't remember, I bought a bag of a thousand of these some time back and uh, I think there they could possibly be a Camasan B400 or a B401 in a size 10. I'm not certain on that, so um, but what it is is a size 10, fairly long shanked hook and um, this fly is uh, quite big, it's the biggest fly that I actually tie. So anyway, uh, the tying thread I'm going to use in here is Unitread Black and 8.0. I'm going to start off here, just behind the eye, and then I'm going to work down along, roughly halfway, and now I'm coming back up. So I'm roughly back a third of the way along the hook shank. So I have a third in front here, and I have two thirds behind. That's a rough estimation. Now, this here is a cape I bought. Um, I did a lot of searching to try and find this. This is grizzle dyed dun color. And it has, it's particularly effective for this fly, but quite a number of other flies as well. So whether you'll be able to get hold of something like that, I don't know, but I'd, in any case, a, a dark grizzly will also grizzle will also do, um, but this would be the preferred. If you can get something like this, this is the preferred. Anyway, I'm going to cut off two hackle tips here, two fairly big ones. There we are. I'm just going to cut off the tips. Now we marry them together. There's one on top of the other. There, tie that in. Tie those two hackle tips in just there. Now the length, I'd sort of measure it as Time and a half the hook shank. That's the best way I can describe it. That's the length of your wings. Okay. Now I'm cutting this off back here at an angle. You notice I'm cutting it at an angle, which will give me the tapered effect as I go back along. So now I'm going back along and touching turns and tying that down. And now back up. And now I'm going to split those two wings, just lift them up like this vertically, split them. When you split them you'll notice that you'll have a lot of hackle poking out the front here and it's a good idea to cut these out of the way. Being careful not to cut either of your wings obviously. Now I'm just tying in front here and then 
a figure of eight around the wings which will splay them out and keep them in a spent winged appearance i.e. flat out for those of you who are not aware spent fly is essentially a dead fly now back down along and now I'm going to use pheasant tail for the tail I just pull out three or four fibers now the tail is quite long on a spent fly it's substantially longer than a dun so give it plenty of length here we are again probably twice the length of the body would be a good proportion Now you note I'm cutting out anything that's um, obscuring the eye of the, the fly. Okay, now next thing. The body. Now this is a mixture I made up from a few different materials. Now I could give the day talking about all the different materials that went into making this. But essentially what you want is an off-white creamy colour. Off creamy colour sort of... You can have little flicks of this and that in it, like there is in this, there's little bits of colour here and there, but essentially what you want is an off-white, off-white creamy dubbing. Now, you can actually buy sort of dubbing in a packet that, that would already be an off-white colour, but I just like to mix my own stuff. So now I'm putting on a nice rope of dubbing here. And on it goes. And you're trying to build a nice tapered body. I have a little lump there that I'm not happy with, so go back. I'm very particular about my flies, so that little lump wouldn't matter in the slightest to the fish. It's just from from my from my own eyes. I just like to see them turn out nice. There we are. Now and one turn in front which will keep the wings in position okay now I'm just going to trim out just that little thing there because I'm very particular anyway now again from this cape I'm going to cut, take out a hackle and there we are that's the one I've chosen cut off just there and get rid of any soft material that would be absorbing a lot of water. This after all is a floating fly. It's a surface film fly but nonetheless it's a floating fly and I'm going to tie that in there like that. Now you notice where the thread is hanging it's important to hang it here at this point that it's not let's say here we want it back there just where the wing is okay. Now I'm going to do a turn in front like this come behind, you're going to turn behind. I'm not using a hackle pliers here because the hackle is long enough that I can do it with my fingers. Again tight up against the wing and another turn tight against the wing. Now I'm bringing my thread over and catching that there. And now I can do another couple of turns, bring the thread over again, catch it, a couple of times even. Now I'm putting this back here, another turn and yet another turn and now I'm going to finally tie it in and tie it off now I'll snip off the waist and now pinch everything out of the way with my fingers tie it down with finish Now, that's the finished fly, well, not exactly for me, right? You can fish that fly exactly as it is, but you'll need, if you're fishing this, to use quite 
a heavy leader in order to stop the helicopter effect. The fact that it has a full hackle and two wings will mean that if the leader is light, it will tend to rotate the leader and twist it, the helicopter effect I call it. So in order to avoid that, you can either use a heavy leader which will prevent the helicopter effect or do what I'm doing here and trim the bottom. Trim all the hackle from the bottom which helps the fly to sit in the surface film um, and represents very well the, um, the spent fly but it also prevents that helicopter effect. So there you go folks, that's a spent mayfly. Now I'm just going to give just one little trim here as well. As you can see, uh, when that sits, if you've, if you've ever um, seen mayflies on lakes for instance, or for, on rivers for that matter, and you see the spent fly, you can see that this fly will sit very well and really does a great job of representing a spent mayfly. So that's my may spent mayfly pattern, folks. Um, if you have a mayfly hatch on your local river, or if you're going fishing any of the lakes, for example, be sure to have a few of these in your fly box. They're a brilliant little pattern and it will not let you down. So that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, if you're not already a subscriber, consider subscribing. And if you'd really like to support my channel, there's a link in the description to my Patreon page. So, Shen Shen Oimse Anuf, Bemme Echain Trishlev, and Kedor Ele. Idrangalin, Slang of Oil.